Hi guys, so welcome to the third part ng ating topic na shear stresses. So, let's consider the following example. A circular hole is to be punched in a plate that has a shear strength of 40 KSI. The working compressive stress for the punch is 50 KSI. Compute the maximum thickness of the plate in which a hole 2.5 inch in diameter can be punched. And then, if the plate is 0.25 inch thick, determine the diameter of the smallest hole that can be punched. Okay, so let's first draw the figure. So, ito yung punch. And then, di dito sa baba yung plate. Let's say, ganyan siya. And then, dito may support. Okay. So, ito yung thickness ng plate. Thickness T. And then, ito naman yung ano, diameter ng punch. And then, binigyan tayo class ng mga allowable stresses. So, para dito sa plate, no, meron lang siyang uh, allowable shear stress hanggang ano, uh, 40 KSI. And then, ito, meron siyang allowable na uh, compressive stress. So, pag sinabi compressive, under yung normal stresses. So, Sigma allow 50 KSI. Okay, so for letter A, ang tinatanong dito class is, gano'n daw yung pinakamalaking thickness, okay, ng plate para makabutas daw or makapunch ng diameter na 2.5 inch. Okay, so mangyayari kasi dito class is that kapag sobrang taba nitong ano, nung plate na to, baka hindi niya mabutas, di ba? So, ang gagawin natin, class, para mabutas niya, edi, papaabuti natin yung stress hanggang 40 KSI. Okay? Ngayon, para masolve ito, class, kailangan natin yung applied load na compressive load, ano, force P. Okay? Kaso, wala tayong value yan. Tama ba? So, paano masasolve yung thickness? So, ang gagawin natin, class, ang ba unang nag-apply yung force P, di ba, dito sa, ano, sa punch. So, ang gagawin natin naman, class, kapag sobrang laki naman kasi na itong force P na to, possibly, bago niya pa mabutas itong plate na to, masisira na agad itong punch na to. So, ang gagawin natin, class, para makuha natin yung pinakamalaking P na pwede nga apply lang dito, e di naman natin siya dun sa hanggang allowable stress lang na itong, ano, nung punch. So, para masolve yung class, e di use natin yung basic formula lang, normal stress. That normal stress is equal sa force over area. Okay. Meron tayong given na allowable stress, 50 KSI. So, anyway, yung 50 KSI, no? pag sinabi mong KSI, that 1 KSI equals 1,000 PSI. Okay, parang kilo lang ang ibig sabihin nun. So, therefore, ito, pwede na natin siya i-rewrite as 50,000 PSI. Parang kasi kung masanay ka sa PSI, mas okay. So, gawin ko tong ano, 50,000 PSI equals force over the cross-sectional area, no, yung, yung area perpendicular dun sa force applied force, so that is pi over 4 times the diameter given 2.5 inch so squared. So, kung PSI ito, so definitely, dapat ito, mas, the unit ng force must be in pounds, kasi pounds per square inch yan. So, pounds per square inch. So, solving for the value of P, Ilan ang pinakamalaking pwede natin i-apply na P? So, 50,000 times pi over 4 times 2.5 squared. So, 2, 4, 5, 4, 3, 6.93 pounds. So, ito yung pinakamalaking force pina pwede natin apply para hindi niya masisira. Or nasa limit lang itong ano, yung punch. Ngayon, may pina tayo. So, para makabuta siya, di ba? Kailangan makalalim siyang ganyan. Tapos, ano yung mag offer ng resistance dito ulit, class? So, ulit ulit lang natin. Di ba yung palibot ng magiging but mabubutas niya, di ba? So, ito palibot na yan. mag offer yan ng resistance doon sa force P. So, ito yung area na parallel doon sa force P. So, solving for... So, using yung allowable, no? So, that tau is equal sa shearing force over the sheared area. Okay. So, given yung allowable, that is 40 KSI. So, pwede yung gawin 40,000 
thousand psi okay so ito magiging uh, 40,000 psi so equal so ilan ba tong ano she shearing force uh, with respect dito sa shared area na to so that is yung p di ba and then ano ulit yung area nito so circumference times the thickness t or that is circumference pi d and then t okay so yung force p Ito na yan, yung 2, 4, 5. So, lagay natin. 2, 4, 5. 436.93 pounds. And then, divided by pi. The diameter is 2.5 inch. So, unknown yung T. So, that the unit ng T must be in inch, no? Para pounds per inch is square to PSI. So, solving for the value of T. The largest value ng T. So, that is how much. So, sagot, ayan, so sagot is 0 0.78125. So, 0 0.78 inch. Okay. Yan ayan. Okay, so next, letter B. For B, ano naman sabi dito? If the plate, so given naman yung thickness T na 0 0.25 inch. Okay. So, tinatang determine naman daw the diameter of the smallest hole that can be punched. So, gano'n naman daw kalaki yung diameter. So, baliktad naman. Okay. So, paano naman to yung analyze class? So, kung mapapansin mo class, di ba? Kung ano yung pore speed na nandi dito sa okay, na ginamit natin dito sa compressive stress is yun din yung pore speed na ginamit natin dito sa shear stress. Okay, so siguro pwede natin i-equate yun, no? That yung force, okay, na, na pang compression or para sa normal must be equal sa force para sa shearing. Shearing force, no? So, ano nga ulit? Paano kulit sa yung force piece sa compression? So, use natin yung ano? Yung normal stress is equal sa force over uh, area so that normal stress is equal to force over pi over 4 times d squared. Okay, so therefore, yung P can be expressed now as a norm, normal stress times pi over 4 and then d squared. So ito yung pwede natin i-rewrite yung P in terms ng uh, allowable compressive stress and then the diameter. While dito naman si shearing, paano kung muna ng uh, P shearing? So, pwede natin kunin yun dito sa uh, shear stress naman. So, uh, P over or shearing force over the shear area. But, iba yung shearing force, siya nga yung force P na i-apply dito. And then, yung shear area is yung pi dt. So, in terms of uh, shear stress and then diameter and then thickness that P now can be written as tau times pi d t okay so sabi natin class kung ano yung P na ginamit natin dito sa compressive stress yun din yung P na magbibigay ng shear stress dito sa area na to so therefore dapat equal sila so therefore yung dalawang P na to must be equal din so ngayon that uh Sigma times pi over 4 d squared must be equal sa tau times pi d t. Okay. So, given tayo ng uh, allowable. So, this one is 50,000 psi. And then, pi over 4. The diameter. So, yun yung hinahanap. Di ba? Ano yung diameter required? So, d squared equals... Yung, yun sa tau naman. So, this one is 40,000 PSI. And then, pi. And then, d. And then, yung thickness. So, binigyan tayo ng thickness na 0.25 inch. 25 inch. Okay. So, siguro, ah, kakancel itong unit ng, ng PSI. 
So, cancel natin yung pi. Cancel natin yung isang d. So, matitira, ano yung d, tapos meron ditong unit na inch. So, therefore, solving for the value of d, ang value, yung numerical value dito, yung unit is inch. Okay, so that is... So, sagot is 0.8 inch. So, yun na yung final answer. Okay, so let us check kung tama yung sagot natin. So, thickness 0.78 and then the diameter is 0.8 inch. Okay, so proceed tayo sa next problem. So, sabi dito, the rectangular wood panels form by gluing together two bolts along the 30 degree seam as shown in the figure. The term the largest axial force P can be carried safely by the panel if the working stress for the wood is 120 PSI and the normal shear stress in the glue are limited to 700 PSI and 40 PSI respectively. Okay, so draw natin siya class. So, mas maganda siguro kala sa 2D ko na lang siya do-drawing. Okay, ito yung wood as a whole. Okay, ang dimension dito is 4 inch. And then dito, no, 1 inch. Okay. And then, subjected siya kala ngayon sa ano, uh, actual tensile force P. And then class, yung wood, hindi kasi sa isang buo class, eh, ginlul lang siya, no? pinagdikit lang siya. So, so, ito yung horizontal line, so along that uh, 30 degree inclined plane. So, nakaglul lang siya dyan class. Okay. Tapos, syempre, ano mangyayari class? Merong mga allowable uh, stresses, no? Yung wood as a whole, tapos yung glue, meron din siyang allowable. Kasi, pwede kasi ang tendency, kung sobrang uh, lakas ng glue, so, baka mag-fail siya, no, yung as a whole, no, ang tinitingan mo yung wood. Or di kaya, kung weak naman itong glue, so, ang tendency, kakahila natin na under siya na uh, tensile force. So, baka masira itong glue na to. So, binigyan tayo ng mga allowable. So, allowable nor normal stress para sa wood. 1, 120 PSI. So, yung allowable normal para sa glue, 700 and then yung tau ng glue is 450. So tinatanong class na gano daw kalaki yung force pina pwedeng i-apply in such a way na hindi mo ma-exceed yung mga limits. Okay. So anyway, so madali lang to class, edi analyze natin ano uh, per section yung analyze natin siya as a wood, so, analyze din natin tong glue. So doon muna tayo sa wood. So for wood Okay, so tingnan mo yung wood, no? subject siya sa tensile force, so therefore, normal stresses. So, that normal stress is equal, diba, sa ano yun? Force over area. So, ito is, kung normal stress ito ng wood, dapat yung area na consider natin is yung area ng wood. So, ilan ba tong area ng wood na perpendicular dun sa force P? So, diba, ito yung area, tama ba? Okay, dahil naka 2D, so mukha lang siyang line, pero ano yun, ganyan yun. Okay. So, ilan ba yung area nyan, class? Ilan yung area nito? So, that area, syempre, equal sa uh, length times width. So, 4 inch by 1 inch. Okay. Yun yung area nito. So, sulat natin dito. 1, 120 PSI equals the force P and then divided by area. 4 inch by 1 inch. So, ngayon, ilan yung force P na pwedeng i-carry ng wood as a whole? So, sagot is 4, 4, 80. So, pounds. Pero hindi pa yun yung sagot, no? Ngayon, class, paano naman yung sa glue joint? 
ng paano natin siya analyze. Ang gawin natin class, i-isolate natin tong ilalim. No? So, itong ilalim, ihulay natin siya sa taas para lumabas yung mga forces doon na i-carry niya. So, upon isolation, so, dito na tayo sa full glue. So, isolate natin. Ito siya. So, di ba dito, nandito yung force P. Tama? So, ngayon, syempre, para maging in equilibrium dito, meron ding upward force naman na force P. Okay. Ngayon, ito yung ano, area ng, ito naman yung area ng glue. Tama ba? Kung para sa glue, ito yung area niya. Ah, kung para sa wood, no, ito yung area niya. So, ito yung area ng wood. Ito naman, class. Ito naman yung area ng glue. No, anyways, huwag muna tayo sa area. So, with respect sa area, anong direction na itong force P, class? No, neither, ano siya, normal or neither parallel. So, therefore, class, para makuha natin yung normal and then yung, yung, yung parallel component niya with respect dito sa area. So, gawin tayo ng, ano, ng triangle. So, kung ito yung force P, yung resultant. So, along this axis, and dito yung uh, normal component niya. Okay, tapos, yung along this axis, and dito naman yung uh, parallel or yung shearing force component na itong force P. So, pag ganyan. So, let's say, ito na yun. Okay. So, ito yung tawagin kong normal component. Tapos, ito yung shearing component na itong uh, resultant force P na ito. So, kung ito is 30 degrees, so ito is 30 degrees din. Okay. So, isolate natin siya class para mas ma-analyze natin siya further. So, ito yung resultant P. And then, ito yung dalawang components. PS. And then, PM. Okay. Angle. 30 degrees. So, syempre, dapat ito is perpendicular, di ba? Yung, yung PN sa PS. So, anyway. So, paano natin makukuha yung PN sa PS components ng force P using this triangle? So, gamit tayo ng trigo function. No? So, para sa PN, so, hypotenuse. So, adjacent siya with respect sa angle 30 degrees. So, therefore, cosine. So, that cosine of 30 degrees is equal to uh, ka-adjacent PN over hypotenuse P. So, that in terms of P, PN is equal to how much? P cosine of 30 degrees. How about naman doon sa shearing component ng force P? So, hypotenuse opposite naman siya with respect sa angle 30 degrees. So, therefore, sine uh, function, function naman. No? So, sine 30 degrees is equal to opposite PS over hypotenuse. So, that PS in terms of P is equal to P sine 30 degrees. Okay, bakit natin kinawa yung class? So, para masolve natin yung, yung mga force P, no? With respect dun sa ano, sa allowable normal and then allowable shear stress with respect dun sa glue. Okay. So, so ano tayo? For, for, so, sa, nasa glue tayo, no? So, for, for uh, normal sa glue, so that is normal stress sa glue, must be equal sa ano? P, no, na normal, syempre, over dun sa area ng glue. Tama ba? So, kung ito yung pinag-aaralan natin class, yung, yung glue, kukunin natin yung uh, normal stress dyan. So, kailangan natin yung normal force with respect sa glue. Tapos, kailangan din natin kunin yung area ng glue. Okay? So, pa, so meron na tayong PN. Ito yan. So, paano naman kukunin itong area ng glue class? Okay? So, kung 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 itong line na to, inclined plane na to, ito yung area ng glue. Okay. Tapos, di ba kanina class, di ba itong horizontal line, siya yung 
yung nag, pwede mag-represent ng area ng wood. Itong horizontal line. Ito naman yung area ng wood. So, in terms ng area ng wood, ano yung area ng glue class? So, sa right triangle na ito. So, anong triangle function yun? Hypotenuse adj uh, adjacent. So, that uh, cosine of 30 degrees is equal to adjacent area ng wood over area ng glue. So, that area ng glue is equal sa area ng wood over uh, cosine of 30 degrees. But, area ng wood, ba ito yon Yung 4 inch by 1 inch. So, pwede ko na itong ipalit ng class. Okay. So, sana nagigets. So, normal stress sa glue is equal sa normal force with respect sa glue. And then, yung area ng glue in terms ng area ng wood is area ng wood over cosine of 30 degrees. Okay. Ngayon, uh, input na natin yung mga, mga nasolve natin and then given. So, given yung allowable normal stress sa glue is 700 PSI. And then, yung normal force no, in terms of P kasi ito yung hinahanap is P cosine of 30. So, P cosine of 30 degrees over so, yung area ng glue in terms of area ng wood is ito. So, area ng wood, yun yung 4 inch by 1 inch. So, 4 inch by 1 inch over cosine of 30 degrees. So, sa equation na to class, force P na lang yung ano. So, kung PSI ito, so pounds dapat ito. Tapos, ito inch squared. So, correct. So, P in pounds is how much? sagot is ayan no so pakikalkin na lang so sagot is 3733.33 pounds okay pero hindi pa yun yung sagot no ano nang ibig sabihin na ito class na kapag yung force pin na inapply ko doon sa 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 wood ko lumagpas doon sa 3733 ibig sabihin magpe-fail na yung ano etong glue joint along doon sa normal force nya no na exceed niya yung normal stress, allowable niya. Pero may isa pa class, di ba? Meron din siyang allowable na shear stress. So, that shear stress sa glue. So, we know that shear stress is equal sa shearing force over the sheared area. Wherein, kung ito yung shearing force, ito yung shared area, di ba? Yun yung area parallel dun sa shearing force. So, therefore, area glue pa rin ito. Area glue pa rin yan. Okay, so we know and uh, rewrite natin. So, meron tayong dito allowable shear stress ng glue. Yung PS in terms of P is what? Ayan o. Oh. So, P sine 30 naman siya. P sine of 30. While, itong area ng glue, so, di ba, in terms ng area ng wood, ito nga siya. So, that is area wood over cosine of 30 degrees. Okay, so, uh, lagay natin yung mga, substitute natin yung mga given and then yung mga nasa natin value. So, allowable is 450 PSI. P sine 30 degrees over area ng wood, that is 4 inch by 1 inch over uh, cosine of 30 degrees. So, ganun pa rin. Unknown is P. So, pag nasolve natin yan, yung unit niyan is in uh, pounds. So, anong sagot? So, yung allowable naman in terms of uh, shear stress is 4156.92 LB. Okay. So, meron tayong tatlong forces na nasolve. So, para sa wood, no? So, ano natin? Pag-sama-sama natin. So, for wood, 
yung P na kaya niya i-carry is hanggang ayan, 4480. Para naman dun sa glue or okay para sa glue, ang kaya niya i-carry is what? So may dalawa, di ba? Meron siyang uh, kaya i-carry na P na 3733 along sa normal stress. So pwedeng 3733 ng 4 normal. And then, 4156 for sure. 4156.92 for sure component naman. So, tinatanong class is what? Gano daw yung, kala, ano yung pinakamalaking? Ayan. Now, determine the largest actual force speed that can be carried. So, ibig sabihin, safely, no? Ibig sabihin, para maging safe, yung pinapipili natin yung smallest, di ba? So, sino dyan yung class? Eh di ito, 3733. So, therefore, P safe no, is equal sa 3733.33 LB. So, yun ay yung final answer. So, let us check. Ayan. So, correct. No? So next, so the lap joint is connected by three twenty mm diameter rivets. Assuming that the actual load P is fifty kilonewton, is distributed equally among the three rivets. Find the shear stress in a rivet. So, shear stress na madali lang to class. So, given the figure, okay. So, siguro ito na lang ako sa side view. So, subjected siya sa an actual tensile force P na binigay is 50 kN. And then, meron ditong tatlong rivets. Okay. And then, given din yung diameter. Uh, diameter ng rivet. Is equal sa 20 mm. So, tinatanong dito ko last required. Is yung shear. Shear stress sa rivet. Okay. So, simple lang naman yung class. Solution. So, we know that shear stress is equal sa shearing force over sa area being sheared. Okay. So, sa case na to, yung shearing force dito, diba, paano ba? Kasi yung gawin natin, hihilahin natin, diba? Hilahin mo yung, yung dalawang plate. So, para maghiwala yan class, yung same ng analysis natin. Para maghiwala yan, ilang area ng rivet yung kailangan maputol class. Ihilahin mo. Para magpaghiwalay mo yung ilan yung area na, na puputuloy natin class. E di ito isa. Ito dalawa. Ito tatlo. Tama ba? So, yung, she yung shearing force dito is yung P itself. While the sheared area is yung tatlong area ng uh, rivet. Okay. So, by substituting, P is 50,000 newtons over sa tatlong area ng rivet. So, that is 3 times pi over 4 times the diameter is 20 mm squared. So, newton mm squared. So, the value ng shear stress in MPA is is ano? Ayan. So, 53 Point zero five uh, m p a okay so ganon lang siya okay so let's check tamang sagot okay correct next so eto na yung last problem natin class ha 
uh, topic natin under ng shear stress. So, sa next video ko lang, pupasok naman tayo sa uh, third type ng simple stress which is yung bearing stress. Okay? So, dito. Ano naman sabi dito? The plate welded to the end of I-beam is fastened to the support with four 10mm diameter bolts, two on each side. Assuming that the load is equally divided among the bolts, determine the normal and shear stress in a bolt. Okay, so draw natin siya class. Okay, ito yung I-beam. And then, naka-bolt siya, uh, naka siya, no? So, dito yung bolts. So, yan, naka-bolt. So, sa side view class, no? Dalawa lang yung nakikita mo, pero meron pa yung sa kabilang side, no? Kaya, sabi, apat. Tapos, ah, uh, Sabi, itong, itong I-beam na to is subjected siya sa ano, uh, actual tensile force na 30 kN. Okay, binigay rin yung angle. So, extend ko to. So, yung angle na ito is, with respect sa horizontal, is 40 degrees. Okay, so tinatanong ano daw yung uh, normal stress sa bolt. Then, ano yung shear stress sa bolt. Okay. So, madali lang yan, class. Makukuha natin yung normal and then shear stress pag nakuha na natin yung mga normal component and then yung shear component nung uh, resultant force na to na 30 kN. No, kasi with respect sa ano orientation ng bolt, no, hindi siya, it is neither normal or parallel doon sa ano. So, gagawin natin class, i-components natin siya. Okay, so ito yung li uh, line of ano, force P. So, dito lagay tayo ng component na ano, na component niya na ano, normal with respect dito sa area ng ano, ng mga bolts. So, ito yung normal component and then andi dito naman yung shear component PS. Okay, so paano kukunin yung ano, PN saka PS na yan? So, solve na tayo class. So, for the normal stress, so, normal stress is equal sa ano, force over area. Pero yung force na gagamitin natin dito must be yung normal force, ba? Tapos, ilan yung area class na magre-resist nung ano? ng normal force na yan. So, upon the action ng normal force, ilang area yung magre-resist sa kanya. Diba, ito is apat na diameter 10 mm. So, therefore, that is apat na cross-sectional area kasi apat ito yung klase, yung magre-resist ng PN. Anyway, so, paano mag-solve itong PN? So, using yung ano, component, so 30, 42, so therefore, this one is 30 cosine of 40 degrees. While ito is ano naman. So, pataas naman siya. So, 40 degrees. So, therefore, ito is ano. 30 sine of 40. Okay. Using the normal component ng force. So, uh, normal stress is equal sa 30 cosine of 40. But, take note ang unit nito. Diba? Kilo newton. So, convert natin siya. So, 1000 newtons per 1 kilo newton. And then divided by apat na area mag resist So that's 4, 5 over 4. And then 10 mm squared. So the normal stress is how much? Okay, so sagot is 73. Ayan, so 73.15. So cancel ang kilo newton, newton mm squared, so mpa. Okay. And then last, for, for shear stress naman sa bolt, 
So that is tau is equals to shearing force over the sheared area. But the shearing force is ito yun, no? So lagi lang natin PS ulit. Over the sheared area. So ilang area yung mag-resist na itong shearing force? Ito yung one area na ito, one area at sa likod pa, sa bali apat ulit na area, cross-sectional area ng bolt. So that shear stress is equal sa PS, so 30 sine 40. But it is in kilonewton, so convert ulit. So, 1,000 newton, 1 kilo newton. Divided by apat na area na volt. And then, so, cancel, cancel newton mm squared. So, that is MPA. So, that shear stress sa volt is how much? Okay, so sagot is 61.38 MPA. Okay, so ganun lang siya. Okay, so check natin class kung tama yung sagot. 73 and then 61.38. Correct. So ayun, hanggang dyan na lang class yung discussion natin under sa topic na shear stresses. So sana may nag-guess kayo. So sa next video, bearing stress naman tayo. So, thank you guys and God bless.